So we're going through some crazy times, right? Here we are in the middle of a pandemic. Is that, if that weren't enough, we've sustained wildfires here in California in the west, hurricanes in the east. If that's not enough, here in the San Gabriel Valley, are you ready? Last week we were rocked by what else? An earthquake at 11.30 at night. When that earthquake hit, I realized it was time to give a sermon about the second coming of Christ. <laughs> and would you know it, today's reading, exactly today's reading from the church calendar, written by, you know, our church fathers. Today's reading was on Matthew 24, verse 30 to 36, which speaks of what? The second coming. So today's message is 100% theology, Orthodox Church theology. That's today's topic on the second coming, right? So between the Gospels of Jesus, the Epistles of St. Paul, the second coming of Jesus is mentioned more than how many? 300 times, more than any other doctrine. It basically, it tells us three things. What to expect when Christ comes again, what signs to look for before Christ comes again, and how to be prepared for when Christ comes again. Basically, it falls under those three categories. So the church teaches us what? The church itself, the Armenian church. An important point. Do not be afraid. Instead of fear of the second coming, we're taught to be prepared for the second coming. How? With genuine, here's the word, repentance. Okay, repentance. Abashadutra. Well, this was the point of the prodigal son. Yeah, sure, he was warmly received by his father, but first he returned with humility. That was the initial step, no pun intended. Now, the second coming does what? The second coming challenges us to keep a lifestyle consistent with what Christ expects us to have in order to inherit eternal life. So what's a Christian lifestyle? Matthew 25. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was sick, you visited me. And when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me, says Christ. So you know that guy on the street corner holding the sign, he's begging. You know who that is? That's Jesus. Because when you do it for the least of them, you do it to me. That doesn't mean I'm suggesting we go out and give money to those poor bums, sorry, those poor people on the street. Because we often know what happens. They go out and they buy alcohol or drugs or what? So we give to the centers, okay? We give to the centers who deal with them professionally, compassionately. Well, this is the lifestyle upon which we'll be judged when Christ comes again. Here's an important point. Heaven isn't just a place. It's a place for prepared people who have a prepared lifestyle. So if there are people who need love, and everybody does, what are we doing about it? If there are people who are lonely, and sooner or later we're all there, what are we doing about it? I had a dogmatic theology professor in seminary, world-renowned, who said this one day. If the second coming was really in the forefront of our minds every single day like it should be, then half the stuff coming out of our mouths wouldn't come out. And half the things we do, we wouldn't do. Because we realize that one day, we'll have to defend it all. It's as simple as that. It's not just what we say which we shouldn't have said, or what we should have said that we didn't say. It's not just what we do which we shouldn't have done. It's, it's what we should have done we didn't do. Sooner or later, all those actions and inactions have to be defended before God Almighty. Father Sarkis, you really believe that? Yeah, well, I'm not going to call Jesus a liar. He said it. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. How awful it will be to hear all the nasty things we've said about other people, all those rotten things we've done to other people, replayed right in front of us before our Heavenly Father. Let's face it, for most of us, it'll be a colossal embarrassment. All the more reason we need to repent and do what? Focus on good works from this time forward with the hope that our good works will be replayed before our Heavenly Father. Yes, I really believe it. We could replay it and we could say at one point, yes, I was kind, yes, I was forgiving. No, I was not selfish with my time. No, I was not insensitive to others. No, I did not harbor anger toward others for years on end. Yes, I did repent. John 5, 24. We read it at every funeral rite. He who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. 
2 Corinthians 5.10 For all must appear before Christ to be judged by him. Each of us will receive what he deserves according to everything he has done, good or bad. Here's the deal. We're accountable to God the Father. That's it. No discussion. No wiggle room. We're accountable to God the Father. There's no I can't recall. There's no I don't remember. The parable of the talents For the Son of Man is like a man taking a far journey who left and gave authority to his servants. Remember that? The absent landlord will return expecting to see what his servants have accomplished with his stuff in his absence, right? He gave each of them money. Accordingly, they will be rewarded. Christ is the landlord who returns after his long absence expecting to see what his servants have accomplished. We're the servants who must show what we've done. At one point, St. Paul, it's more than one point, but at one point he gets fed up with the insignificant squabbles, St. Paul, and the petty disagreements between his followers. I mean, he's fed up based on what they're squabbling about. They're not getting the big picture. It's like they're arguing about how to arrange the deck chairs on the cruise ship. Meanwhile, the Titanic is in struck and the ship is going down. What difference could it make how to arrange the deck chairs? Here's how St. Paul expresses his frustration. Romans 14. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? We'll all stand before the judgment of the Son of God. It's written, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall give praise to God. Each of us shall give account of himself to God. Dear Sarkis, the Armenian church doesn't talk much about the second coming. We don't. We proclaim it every week in the Creed of Nicaea. We just said it a few minutes ago here in the sanctuary, like we do every single week. He is to come with the same body to judge the living and the dead. We say it at Ahokianki's prayer too. You are Lord and creator of all, judge of the living and of the dead. Fact check about the second coming. One, Christ made it very clear there's a lifestyle which leads to heaven. Two, we are in the sight of God Almighty each moment of each day for our entire life. Three, we're judged according to the standards he set and we're held accountable. Four, through humble repentance, our sinful past can be wholly and entirely erased. Five, every day that passes, we're one day closer to the second coming. We're like the guests at the marriage feast in Luke 12. Truly I say to you, you must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Other denominations try to figure out when Christ will come. But that's not what the Orthodox teaches. That's how the Jehovah's Witnesses started, right? Charles Days Russell, oh, he's coming at such a day. Sell your belongings. Give me the money. That day came and went, well, I meant two years down. So everybody else, sell your money, give it to me. No, other denominations try to figure out when Christ will come. That's not what the Orthodox teaches. The Orthodox Church teaches Come what may, pandemic, wildfire, hurricane, earthquake, we don't know when he'll come again. So we need to be prepared every minute of every day. We need to be mindful of what we do and what not to do, of what to say and what not to say, because it matters. We do so not out of fear of punishment, but out of fear of laziness, one of the deadly sins, because we're accountable to the author of life. This I ask in the name of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.